What's going on, everybody? It's Xavier from the 80s, and you are now at GBA Reviews. Just to give you guys an update, there will be some channel changes soon. All right, but I will be giving those giving you those updates in the next couple of days as soon as I get what I need to get. Now, what I've noticed, what I've been noticing from this year in particular is that there are a an abundance of different horror movie series that are or horror movies that are becoming series now. Now, it's not unheard of. We've heard about The Purge. You've seen uh, Hannibal. Also, Norman Bates has his own series, too. Ash and the Evil Dead, so on and so on. But this year in particular, I feel like there has been a bunch of announcements of different horror films. Now, today we have recently got word that Upgrade, the movie from 2018 by Leo Wannell, that that movie is getting its own TV series. And luckily, the same people that are doing a TV series I mean, the same people behind the movie are the same people behind the TV series. And the synopsis of it is Upgrade. The series picks up a few years after the events of the film in a broader universe. And it's basically based on an evolved version of the stem with a new host, meaning that they couldn't get the same actor back. And basically, it's a reimagining in a world where the government repurposes the stem in order to help curb criminal activity. So the stem from the first movie, which enhances the human being that's that's in a part of it. I guess now they're going to be giving these into maybe police officers and having them use this technology in order to fight crime. I'm assuming. Now, to me, it sounds like a good idea. Um, I'm glad that they have the original people behind the original film behind it. I don't like when the property changes hands and then somebody wants to have like this re reimagining or revision and they change up everything. So it's good that the same team that was behind the first film is also behind the next film. So the good thing about it is, uh, let's see who's behind this. Uh, Leo Winnell obviously is behind it. Uh, he's He was the one that brought to you The Invisible Man that came out this year. That was a pretty good film. Uh, the, t the writing team behind this is behind the Purge series. And as of right now, we don't really have an actual channel or where to that we'll be able to view this series on we just know that it's coming right so me personally i'm hyped about it i would have loved the sequel but a tv series is just as good we can still get that sequel but i like how they're using this in order to expand the universe now moving on hbo recently announced a hellraiser series right me personally hellraiser is one of my favorite franchises in the horror uh horror community I love Hellraiser, uh, especially the first four films. I've watched most of them. I think the only one I haven't watched is Inferno. Uh, but I am an avid fan of this series. And I was glad to hear that David Gordon Green, the one behind Halloween 2018, will be directing or he'll be behind writing one of the uh, episodes. I think it's the pilot and maybe a couple of other episodes. Also, you have uh, Michael Do Doherty who's also worked on Trick or Treat, Krumpus, and Godzilla. He's also being tied to this, this new TV series as well. And then we have Mark Verheiden, who's worked on things like The Mask from the 90s, Ash vs. the Evil Dead, and Swamp Thing. So these are some pretty good people behind this series. And it's kind of giving me a good feeling that this series is going to be a lot better than what most can imagine because most people are afraid oh you know what they're probably going to lighten it up they're not going to get it right but these three people the films that they've been a part of have been pretty true to the origins or the the original works of the films or the tv series that they've adapted from it they've they've really stayed true to the source material and honestly these these three being a part of the Hellraiser HBO series, that sounds like a winner to me, right? Especially with Cr the man that worked on Trick or Treat and Crumpus. Love those movies. Those movies were excellent. Ash and the Evil Dead, I heard, is a good show. I haven't really watched it. Halloween 2018 was, was amazing. One of the better Holly, Holly, Halloween movies in that franchise. And so far, they have the rights to the first four films, and they will be using that as a basis for the uh, TV series. So those four films are honestly the best in the franchise. Hellraiser 1, 2, 3, and 4, best. But I think 4 is Bloodline. Bless you. So 
bloodline goes kind of into the past and also into the future right that one is kind of all over the place that to me i think that was the last one that they released in movie theaters as well too now you have Hel- uh, hellraiser one and two which follows it's kind of like a, a back-to-back film and then you also have part three which is hell on earth and that talks about how the cinevites are trying to kind of come onto earth or open a gate to hell in order into earth right so following these four movies, I think that's a winner. Uh, by them saying that it's going to be adapted from the films means that they're not going to change much from that film. So you don't have to worry about, I don't know, the pinhead changing drastically or chatter or the chatterer or anybody else in the, in the Cenobite group. You don't have to worry about those things being changed too much, right? Moving on, Maniac Cop. All right, so uh, a lot of you guys don't know about Maniac Cop. It was a very cult uh, horror film from the 80s about about, um, an officer by the name of Matt Cordell who was seeking revenge on the dirty cops that uh, falsely imprisoned him and eventually had him murdered. And uh, so basically he kind of comes back and I want to say a zombie for him, but he's not really a zombie because I think they said that he was still alive and whatever. But anyway, the movie's uh, excellent. Will this movie get, or will this TV series kind of get sidetracked? Who knows? Uh, with recent activity with uh, against uh, happening with police and law enforcement, I don't know if this might get sidetracked. I don't know if this is one of those things that might get put, that might get shelved. It's very possible that it might get shelved. But anyway, so this series is supposed to be on HBO. Let me find my notes. All right, there it is. It's supposed to be on uh, HBO, and we have uh, Nicholas Winding Refn, who's behind Drive and The Neon Demon. Now, Drive, everybody knows Drive. Drive is a movie with, uh, with Ryan Gosling, and Neon Demon was a, probably a, lot, a film that nobody really knows about, but the movie's not that good. Uh, if I, you want a quick summary of it, it's not that good, in my opinion. But visually, the movie's great. Watching it, visually, stunning. Uh, the movie as a whole, I can pass, right? And then you also have John Hames, who worked on Universal Soldier and Dragonized with John claude Van Damme. I've seen that film. It's okay. You also have them, him, uh, him working on this series as well. What do I think? I think with the fact that uh, Nicholas Winding's Refn working on it, or Nicholas Winding Refn, whatever his name is, uh, him working on this me- means to me that this is going to look good. It's going to look good. Now, whatever writing team he gets behind it is going to mean everything. But having him behind it, it means that it's going to look good. Visually, it's going to look nice. Uh, John Hames doesn't really bring much to this conversation for me. I think he also did some screenwriting for uh, some show about firefighters or something. I'm not really sure. I think it's Chicago... Was it Chicago PD? I don't know. Anyway, he did something. So I'm not really familiar with his work. I just know that he worked on Universal Soldier and Dragon Eyes. Dragon Eyes is okay. It's it was I remember that was like a John Claude Van Damme flick that came out like in 2012, I wanna say. It was okay. It wasn't nothing nothing to go run and watch, in my opinion. So that's we haven't really got much information on Maniac Cop. We know it's supposed to be on HBO. Will it still come out with all this police activity? I don't know, but just just to know, Matt Cordell does kill cops as well, too. It's not like he's out here just killing uh, citizens. He kills both citizens and cops. But I know that in today's world, with the light of events that are going on, it is very possible that this series might be shell. All right, just to kind of give you a heads up. Next on the list, Chucky, right? And this is Chucky, uh, Charles Lee Ray Chucky, right? Uh, from the original Child's Play series from the 80s. Um, the original good guy doll. So what do we know? Don uh, Mancini, he will be working on this film. He's worked on all the Child's Play films, all of them, including Curse and Cult of Chucky. Uh, um, he's been working on this. He's been, uh, he's been pushing for it, and he has his TV series. We know that Jennifer Tilly will return, and also in the synopsis that I'm going to read in a minute, they talk about how other characters from Chucky's past might show up as well. Now, there's rumors saying that the kid in the, the main actor that they're going to be following, the young man, apparently he's going to be in middle school, and also he's going to be gay. Now, a lot of, I already can hear right now a lot of people going like, oh, damn, SJW, agenda, 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 right? Honestly, I don't want to 
if you watch C to Chucky, you know that there's like gay shit in the Child's Play series. On top of that, Don Mancini is gay. So it's not going to be unheard of. I don't think it's like something that he's doing in order to push an agenda or anything. The guy's gay. Uh, he had gender identity issues in the seat of Chucky. That was one of the topics in the movie. So I don't think it's an agenda. I honestly think it's just somebody talking um, their own personal things influxed inside of their film, which a lot of directors and writers and things do. Right. I don't think this is going to be a make or break for the series, to be honest with me. Um, Jennifer Tilly is going to return. Now, the synopsis so far. In a series, a vintage Chucky doll turns up in a suburban yard sale in small American town. It's soon turned into chaos as a, series, as a series of horrifying murders begin to expose their hypocrisies and secrets. Meanwhile, the arrival of enemies and allies from Chucky's past threaten to expose the truth behind the killings as well as the demon doll's untold origins as a seemingly ordinary child who becomes this monster. So we are going to probably see Charles Lee Ray as a child, which sounds very interesting, right? Uh, what do I think about this? So far, Don Mancini is in it. Uh, he's behind the writing in it. Cult of Chucky was okay. Uh, Curse of Chucky was whatever. I like the idea of Cult of Chucky, to be honest. Cult of Chucky had a really cool idea behind it. The whole throwing his body... Uh, uh, possessing multiple dolls at once and splitting it. That was pretty cool. Curse of Chucky was whatever. Didn't really like it. It's okay. It's something I would not, I can pass on. Uh, Child's Play 3 is one of the least favorite ones of the group, of the series, and Child's Play 1 and 2 are classics. So I'm excited to see where he goes with this series. I want to see what goes on, but it's going to be good to see him helm a series that he's created and he's cradled throughout his whole career and see where he takes it, especially as a TV series, because now you don't have the limitations of, okay, I need to get this done in an hour and 30 minutes and tell a story and be done. No, you can kind of stretch it out and span it over episodes, which, which gives you more time for storytelling. All right. So let's see what he can come up with on basically using the time span of an episode. We don't have a number of episodes yet. I know online there's leaks, about what like the pilot episodes were and about what the series were, but I haven't looked at it because I don't want to be spoiled. So I left that alone, but um, yeah, let's see where that goes. I'm kind of excited for that. And Chucky's going to be on a sci-fi network. So that's another good thing. All right. So moving on honorable mentions. Okay. These aren't really things that I'm super excited about, but they're horror related. So I feel the need to talk about them. Juan, uh, known in America as the grudge. They're getting a Netflix series. Uh, that Netflix series is going to be out on July 3rd. Note to everybody out there, it will be a Japanese language series, which means subtitles. You're going to have to read. So if you're not into the whole Japanese language, I got to read thing, then it's probably going to bother you, okay? But me personally, uh, there's a trailer out for it, and I watched the trailer, and the trailer actually kind of looks interesting. So I might have to check that out. But also, I might have to check out the first Grudge movie in Japanese because I have not finished that movie yet. I watched maybe 30 minutes of it, but the, the fact of the matter was I wasn't feeling that good that day when I was watching it, and I didn't feel like reading, so I just kind of was like, eh, I'll, I'll pick it up some other day. I felt kind of compelled to try to, to watch it that day because I think it was leaving the platform that I was trying to watch it on. Like, it was leaving soon, so I was trying to hurry up and watch it before it left. But I'm pretty sure I could find it somewhere else. But yes, uh, Juan Origins on Netflix, July 3rd. The trailer's out. You can check that out, all right? Tell me what you guys think about that. Now, also, coming in the fall of 2020 on CBS, Clarice. Hello, Clarice. Yes, the Clarice from the Hannibal show, or Hannibal Lecter, the Hannibal movies. She is having her own TV show. It's going to be following the detective, and I think it's based, uh, set six months after the events of Silence of the Lamb, and it's starring Rebecca Breeds from Pretty Little Liars. <clears throat> never watched Pretty Little Liars. I've actually heard about it. I heard it's actually pretty good, but me, never seen it. So I don't know how she is. I don't know if she's a great actress. You guys can let me know if you've watched that show. But yes, Clarice is coming in the fall of 2020. That is another spinoff of a famous horror movie, and we will be learning about that soon. All right, so based on all of the horror movies that we just discussed, what do you guys think? You guys think they're going to be good? Do you guys think they're going to be bad? Do you think they're going to be amazing? 
or atrocious, you let me know. All right, this is David from the 80s. You are at GBA Reviews, and I will see you guys next time. Adios.